China's performance at the One Show and the Khan Festival of Creativity. Now this is thoughtful. <laughs> Hello, I'm Andrew Locke in Shanghai, your guest host for today. As our regular viewers will know, China's ad market has become one of the largest in the world, but it's not really punching its weight in terms of wins at advertising award shows. We regularly look at China's performance at global and regional festivals to see how work from this market measures up to that of other countries and compare how China is improving year on year. This week on Thoughtful China, I'll be talking with Dean Sholi, Managing Director of TBWA Hakihodo in China about how Chinese agencies performed this year at the One Show in New York in May and the Khan Lion International Festival of Creativity in June. Dean, thanks for coming in. How do you think China performed this year overall at each festival and, and is the work from China this year better than last year, in your opinion? Andrew, first, thanks for inviting me here. This year, China crushed it at the awards, both at the One Show and at Cannes. Um, just to put it, this into perspective, uh, when we look back at the history of China and awards, um, China didn't win its first international award until 2001 when it won a gold international at the One Show. It was a pencil for UNICEF. Oh yes, I remember that one. Uh, later, they didn't win the first gold can lion until 2008 with yeah. the work from Adidas and TBWA. The Olympic uh, stuff, right? The Olympic stuff. Yeah. And then most recently, uh, China didn't pick up a Grand Prix at Cannes until 2012 for the work from Coke. Okay. Um, but while they hit all these milestones, they really didn't um, win a uh, quantity of work, uh, just a, 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 a great number of, of awards. For instance, in 2010, mm -hmm. China only brought home 12 lions. Mm -hmm. This year, however, China just broke all kinds of records with the volume of winning entries that they had. Mm -hmm. For instance, uh, at Cannes, China led Asia in terms of the number of shortlists for press, arguably one of the more difficult categories. Mm -hmm. um, and because of a few strong campaigns that were entered from China to Cannes, they actually brought home double the number of golds that they did before. And we can get to some of those winners in a minute. Mm -hmm. The one show, they actually did even better. Um, this year, China had 54 winning entries, mm -hmm. uh, which put China ranked number eight globally. Okay. Now to put that is that behind behind uh, Japan or Japan ahead? actually did really well. They came in second with 90 okay. winning entries, but ranked eighth, it puts them in the top 10. So they're in the big game now. Uh, China is now competing with the U.S. and Argentina and Brazil and U.K. and, and Australia as one of the leading uh, winning countries. So do you see China's presence increasing at the One Show in terms of entries, awards, and attendance? China's influence at the One Show has definitely increased. Uh, first is the One Show's influence here in China. Uh, they actually set up an office in 2005 where they established a full service office and immediately created the China uh, festivals that was really targeted at increasing creativity among students. And we'll get to that at the very, very end. In addition to that, last year China started the Greater China One Show Advertising Awards. Mm -hmm. Uh, the inaugural year was this year, last year, this year will be the second year. It's become very, very successful. Uh, and also given the importance of China, China, uh, the one show for the first time uh, nominated a, a person to sit on the international board of directors mm -hmm. so that China has a much better voice at the one show festivals. So which ads from China stood out for you this year, whether they won or not? This year, one of the most outstanding ads that won both at Cannes and the one show was the human traffic for Buick mm -hmm. that came from Lowe. It was a fantastic campaign that really brought in uh, real human stories in a very emotional way, and it was executed beautifully. Let's show the viewers this commercial.
Yep, this ad really picked up big time at all the award shows. How about another example? Another good example that came out of China that won quite well, did quite well at Cannes was the Great Names for Great Britain. That's Ogilvy. That was Ogilvy out of Beijing. Uh, it was a campaign where they invited Chinese to, to rename a lot of the Great Britain landmarks. Yeah. Let's check out this campaign. For centuries, the British roamed the world, slapping English names on just about everything. So when it came time to promote Great Britain in China, we thought the Chinese might like to return the favor with great Chinese names for Great Britain. Now, Britain is launching its largest ever tourism campaign, and it's based around asking people to choose the Chinese name for a range of British landmarks. We want funny names, we want thought-provoking names, we want names which are poetic. We invited them to suggest names for over 100 iconic British attractions online. And the names poured in. For places not listed on the site, namers were encouraged to personally visit the location and be the first to upload their submissions to Weibo, along with proof of visit. A Chinese Beatles fan named Yu Run grabbed the opportunity to name Beatles landmarks in London and Liverpool. The namers received certificates, and the names were immortalized on Wikipedia, Baidu, and Google Maps. And the campaign became a talking point, both in China and abroad. The new Chinese name for the Gherkin building in London translates quite literally to the pickled little cucumber. The famous Highland Games, some feel it could be better translated as strong man, skirt, party. This was the first time in history one country had invited the citizens of another to come up with names for its major landmarks. And as a result, Britain is greeting a lot more Chinese tourists this year. Thank you very much. Do you, do you think they kept the names after the campaign ended? I mean, I can't imagine any English person actually accepting they would be called that, you know? Well, the good thing is they wouldn't really know what, what Chinese call them in, in, in Chinese. That is true. But that's the thing, so will it become officially recognized as the name of the place in Chinese? I hope so, because Great Britain really? has a pretty good sense of humor. I think they would allow that to happen. Would you like to provide another example? Another good example that came out of China uh, is the Hugging Bright Man campaign. The Hugging Bright Man campaign. That's right. It sounds like it's named by a Chinese person. <laughs> came out of Publicis in Shanghai. It was for hire. Okay. Uh, and the, basically the campaign was, it was a product design campaign okay. where they created a light bulb that was, re, that was rechargeable during classroom time. Okay. Then the students brought the, the light bulb home so they can continue their studies at home under this rechargeable light. Let's, let's take a look at this, this work and I want to ask you some questions about it later. Hire has inspired countless households with their electronics. But in western rural China, a lack of sustainable electricity and few electrical sockets force children to read and study by dim candles and oil lamps. Hire wants to do something for them. We designed the Hire Hugging Brightman using tandem theory with one socket to recharge for the entire class. Students can use the electrical system in school to recharge their little friend, the Brightman and take it back home for two hours of lighting to read books and finish their homework. So far, Higher Hugging Brightman has enlightened the lives of the children in 68 Western country schools in China. And the number is still growing every day. Hugging Brightman. We need you. Okay, Dean. We've seen a lot of brands do this, whereby they do a, a campaign for good. You know, it's pro bono, it's for good. It, it creates a positive reaction among social media for this brand. And they feel that it gives an aura around the brand. How do you feel about that? This whole spate of campaigns that actually tap on innovation, do something that's uh, for charity or for public service. I can't think of a better way to use a brand's 
power and product uh, innovation than to do it for something like this. It was uh, quite a meaningful product. I hope that this thing goes uh, quite mainstream in terms of the rural China. I don't think there's any better way for a company to use its resources than to do campaigns and products like this. D did, you, did you see there was, uh, there was this great campaign, I think it was a, not campaign, it's just a little film of India, it was a bit sarcastic. It, it was targeted towards uh, people, advertising agencies actually, and said, guys, you know, why don't we have Ken every month? Then you will actually have people actually care about all these things, not only during award season. So I'm thinking to myself, for something as good as and noble as this bright man thing, was it something that was proposed by the client or was it proposed by agency or does it even matter? It doesn't matter as long as it does something positive. Yeah, I, I think what you just said is absolutely right, Andrew. As long as they actually create these products, who cares if it comes from the client or the, as long as it's client or the agency, as long as it's produced. Because in the end, these things are adding value to society. Ed, I would ask another question too. And this is, bro, I'm a big fan of the one show. I've always, I've got, I have a soft spot for the one show because I picked up one of my first pencils at, at the one show. And I, what I loved about American advertising was that it was never afraid to sell. It loved always closing with the sell, mm. you know. But I almost feel like advertising these days, it seems a bit more hesitant about it. And it's almost have to wrap it around some bigger purpose. Do you see it as a trend or is it, is, are advertising people actually embarrassed about doing work that's it's about selling rather than just saying, oh, there's something bigger than that, you know? That's another great question. One of the trends that I saw both at Cannes and, and One Show this year was ideas for the good. And mm -hmm. you just mentioned the Hugging Brightman. We also saw the Human Traffic Sign, which mm -hmm. scored quite well. Cannes actually created a new category called Glass Lion. What's that? The Glass Lion was entries that were all targeted around uh, improving gender bias. Okay. So improving women's lives or uh, ethnic groups. And mm. One of the Grand Prix, the Grand Prix this year came mm. from India mm. and it was all targeted around removing stigma from um, uh, women's menstrual cycles. So one of the trends is definitely for good, which is a good thing. Mm. Um, but I think some of the advertising campaigns that won in the UK and the US were definitely hard sell. Mm. I just think it's a cultural thing. Mm. Here in China we know that they, the hard sell doesn't work as well as the emotional sell. And I think in, in many ways China is much more advanced than some of the other developed markets in terms so, of that hard sell. We're almost saying that I'm going to buy an electrical appliance anyway. I might as well buy it from a company that has done some good. If I feel good about the company, I'm more apt to buy another product from them, sure. Okay. Is, is there another case, example of a great commercial you saw at Can and One Show you'd like to share with us? Um, I think another really good example is the Baidu chopsticks. Okay. This started as a, as we all know, started as a April Fool's joke. But the response from the consumers was so great saying, we actually need a product like this, that Baidu turned around, turned to its engineers and said, make this happen. Okay, well, let's take a look at this. On April Fool's Day 2014, a video titled Smart Chopsticks Are Coming caught the attention of millions of Chinese. The joke became an instant hit, with 2.7 million people watching the video within four hours and over 100 million viewer comments. Now, the keyword Baidu Kwaiso has created 32 million search results. Chinese eat everything, but are scared to eat anything. The high number of food safety incidents in China made the public realize that reused oil was responsible for many diseases. But they cannot tell whether the oil is reused or not. Even though the video, Baidu Kwaiso, was a satire of the food safety issues in China, many people wished it were real. You demand it. We made it. Faced with such strong market expectations and customer needs, the founder of Baidu, Robin Lee, said, let's make it, and the joke became a reality. Combining advanced smart technology with different technology patents made it possible to create Baidu Kwaiso. Baidu Kwaiso can detect the safety of the oil at any time. Once the Kwaiso touches the reused oil, a warning light at the end of the chopsticks flashes, warning the user about the reused oil. Data about the reused oil will be sent to your phone. On September 3rd, 2014, Baidu Kwaiso was officially launched. Strong public and commercial demand.
Baidu Kwaiso has been inundated with orders from franchised dining establishments within the restaurant industry, causing the need for mass production. At the same time, the government and some food safety public welfare organizations have shown their strong interest. And the chopsticks have gained media attention locally and globally. The innovations continue. Based on Baidu Kwaiso technology, a brand new social network platform is being established. We never joke about food safety. Baidu Kwaiso. That, that's pretty amazing. It's almost a case of almost like, a, you know, life imitating art. It sure is. And what you said earlier, uh, what can they make this for an affordable price is going to be very important. I think if they can go mass and they can get these, the product price down low enough, I think everyone will have one in their household. Can, can we actually, now we're on the subject of buy two. I mean, uh, I haven't been to Canada in a really long time. So what's it like now, I mean, between is there still a tension between the agencies and the big digital behemoths like Facebook and Google? I mean, who has a bigger presence there now and who's dominant? Is tech still overpowering all kinds of content providers and creators? Mm -hmm. I didn't go to Cannes this year, but the word was that the, the big tech companies were definitely had a much bigger presence at Cannes. Um, I don't think they're squeezing out the agencies. I think they're partnering with them. But a lot of the ideas now are based on technology and big data. Uh, which is a good thing. And as we mentioned earlier with the Baidu, it's the Internet of Things, I think is driving a lot of the, a lot of the ideas and making some of the ideas, I think, more useful. Um, do we have any more examples that you're really fond of? Another big winner at Cannes this year was the Breathe Again campaign out of YNR in China. By the way, YNR was, I think, the, the, uh, won the most awards mm. for China advertising agencies. They did a campaign called Breathe Again. Okay. Why don't we see it and talk about it? Because it's an important campaign for us. Xiaozhu wanted to stand out in a market that was almost as congested as the air. A market where half a million people, mostly children, have died due to air pollution-related illnesses. Factories are responsible for up to 65% of this pollution. So we decided to put a spotlight on air pollution's biggest culprits by using the actual pollution from the factories as a medium. We projection mapped pictures of children choking on pollution with our message on the toxic smoke spewing from the factory's smokestacks. People took notice and the word spread. The video of the projection was filmed and released online. The video received more than 17.3 million views in a week, reaching millions more on social media. More importantly, Xiaozhu received 4.8 million visits to its website and a 38% increase in brand awareness. We also cleared the way for Xiaozhu's entry into the congested marketplace. Man, that brings back memories of Beijing. I still live in Beijing, so I do appreciate what they're saying. The air quality is getting better, but I do understand what they're trying to say. And it's a very powerful and emotional message that they brought across. Is there another example that you'd like to share? A really good example is the campaign for Volkswagen uh, called Eyes on the Road, which was to convince young kids in movie theaters to learn about not to text while they drive. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this.
Okay, that's interesting. So it's, it's almost taking the multi-screen uh, strategy literally. Yeah, and it's perfectly targeted. I mean, young kids do go to the theaters these days and they don't pay attention at theaters or while they're driving. That is true. So the message is right. And finally, please tell us what the One Show has planned for China for the next 12 months. This is an exciting year for the One Show. We've just finished the International Awards and we're now gearing up for the local China, the Greater China Awards. Uh, with the call of entries will start very, very soon, uh, and the judging will begin November 5th. Uh, last year we had uh, nearly a thousand entries, and we hope to, to grow that even more and get the word out. Also happening in November is the One Show China Festivals. Uh, this year we will reach more than 10,000 students across 300 universities in China who will compete for a chance to come to the workshop in Beijing in November. Uh, where we'll fly in some of the top creative talent from around the world mm -hmm. and pair them and partner with them with people like you, mm -hmm. the best in China, to mentor them. And they will compete for a chance to go to the One Show Creative Week in New York next year. Okay, that's awesome. Dean, thank you so much for being on Thought for China. We look forward to having you back in the studio very soon. Well, that wraps it up for today. Be sure to subscribe to us on Youku, Tutou and YouTube. You can also follow us on Weibo and Twitter and join our LinkedIn group. See you again.